So folks, we want to define um, the dot product operation in this section and sort of get an intuition for what we mean by it. And uh, we've already seen a couple of other vector operations, such as the operation of vector addition, where we take two vectors and we return a new one based on the uh, triangle rule, or the parallelogram rule. And we've also seen the operation of scalar multiplication, where we take a vector and stretch it or contract it by a certain scalar amount. One thing I want to point out is that both of these operations, they took either a vector and a scalar or they took two vectors and the result of the operation was again another vector. I want you to contrast that with the vector operation that we're going to do now. So the vector operation that we want to do now is that of uh, the dot product between two vectors. That's what we want to learn how to compute. So in turn, we want to learn how to compute the dot product of two vectors. And I want you to add that this is roughly, what is the dot product going to measure? It's going to roughly measure how much two vectors are in alignment with one another. So it roughly measures how much two vectors are pointing in the same direction. So let's look at an example here. Let's go ahead and contrast. Let's compare and contrast two different pairs of vectors. So here's uh, we'll give ourselves two different origins just so we can keep things straight. So maybe here we've got some vector a and some vector b, and then maybe over here we've got a vector uh, c, and we've got another vector. Um, uh, B or D here, just to use different letters for each one. Okay, so we can think of the dot product, like I said, as a measurement for how well two vectors are pointing in the same direction. And I think you could make the argument that vectors A and B are pointing somewhat in the same direction, whereas vectors C and D very much are not pointing in the same direction. And so in order to analyze this one, and in fact, this is how we're going to first give our definition of the dot product, we could think somehow about the angle uh, between the two vectors. And so that's going to give us a very good geometric definition for what we mean by a dot product. So the, if we were to take um, vector, a vector u and we were to dot it with a vector v, Careful folks, this should be a little bit darker than just a regular multiplication symbol. I'll give you an example of it below. Uh, the geometric definition then is uh, the magnitude of u multiplied to the magnitude of v times the cosine of the angle formed between those two vectors, the smallest angle formed between those two vectors. So here you can see that um, if we were to take the cosine of this angle right here, we're going to get, remember the cosine takes on values between negative one and one, right? Negative one is less than or equal to cosine of theta, which is less than or equal to one. And notice that in this case, we've got a relatively small angle here. And so the cosine value is going to be closer to one than it would be in this case. Over here, we've got an angle that's close to 90 degrees. And remember that the cosine of pi over two is equal to zero. And so this component will be larger for these two vectors, and it will be smaller, closer to zero for these two vectors. When the dot product comes out to be negative, that tells you that the angle between them is actually uh, greater than 90 degrees. And in fact, this would have a slightly negative um, dot product. So the larger the um, absolute value of the dot product of two vectors is, the more they are in alignment. And the best two vectors can be is if they, the angle between them is zero, that is they're pointing in the uh, same direction, in which case the cosine value would be one. And the worst the dot product could be, the smallest in terms of absolute value, is when those two vectors are orthogonal to one another. They are not at all pointing in the same direction. And of course the cosine of um, zero, or excuse me, the cosine of uh, pi over two is zero, making this component vanish in a situation like this as theta approaches pi over two. So here's our geometric definition of the dot product.
Now let's go ahead and give an analytic definition, and we're going to show how these two definitions are related to one another in class. But for the time being, let's go ahead and say that uh, u and v uh, are uh, in R2. with vector u equal to u1, uh, u2, those are its two uh, components, and vector v equal to v1, v2, those are its two components. And so if we were to compute vector u dotted with vector v, what we're gonna get is u1, v1, plus u2, v2, and that's how we're gonna compute it component-wise. Again, one thing to point out is, just like we had up here, if I were to take the dot product of these two vectors, we're going to take the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of the angle between them. Well, the magnitude of a vector is just its length. That's a number. The magnitude of this vector is, again, just a length. It's a number. The product of those two is, again, a number. And the cosine of an angle is a number. So the result of multiplying these two uh, vectors together through the dot product operation is to give us a scalar value, a number. Likewise, you can see that over here, when we compute the dot product between these two vectors, we'll take component-wise u1 times v1, and then u2 times v2, and then we're going to sum those together. But all of this just gives us a number. So let's go ahead and compute the dot product of these two vectors. Uh, in this case, we're asked to compute v dot u. So careful, even though um, interchanging these two for a dot product is going to give us different answers, as I've structured this, I want to take the components of vector v, which would be minus 1, 0, and 5, and you could write that one in many different ways, and I'm going to dot that with the vector u, listing out its components. We've got 2, negative 3, and 2. And so if we go ahead and do the dot product between these, we're going to multiply together the like components. So I'm going to multiply the component minus 1. That's the first component of v times 2. That's the first component of u. And then we'll take u t or 0 times negative 3. And then we will take um, 5 uh, times 2. And if we go ahead and actually compute this, let's see, this is negative 1 plus 0 plus 10, and I get that the dot product between these two vectors is 9. Um, if you want to compare to, to what degree these two vectors are in alignment, you'd have to compare them to some other pair of vectors. And if this were a larger value than the other two, you'd say these two vectors are more in alignment than the other two. Uh, so there we've gone ahead and computed the, vec the, the dot product between these two vectors. So let's look at an immediate application uh, why this might be important, this idea of talking about to what degree two vectors are in alignment with one another. And we can think of, um, uh, we could think of an object moving in a particular direction maybe this is moving to the right, and we could think of applying a force uh, to that object. And notice that as far as in the direction of the object's motion, if this is the way the object's moving, this force is not performing any work on the object. So if what I just said made sense, that means you've had a, a little bit of physics and you've learned about the notion of work. If not, I'm going to go ahead and introduce that now. So if you've had a physics class, you've seen work loosely defined as force times distance, but that's actually not a very precise way to define work. And it's more accurate to say that work is the magnitude of the force in the same direction of, uh, of the motion of the... Of, uh, Sorry, it's the magnitude of the force in the direction of motion times the displacement vector. So what do we mean by that? Well, let's let F equal the force vector. And let's let D be your displacement vector. Then work is defined to be uh, the force dotted with the displacement. And what this does is this takes the, comp the measures, uh, it measures to what degree is a force applied to an object 
op, uh, acting in the direction of motion of that object. And the product of those two, that will give you that uh, uh, value for the force. So let's go ahead and put that in, into uh, an example here. So in this case, we've got a suitcase that's being pulled along a, a flat sidewalk, and you'll see a problem like this in your pre-work. Um, so here we've got some suitcase right here, and it's moving in this direction, and it's in this magnitude of this vector. I mean, we could actually give this vector right now if, if we treat this as uh, the origin right here. Then this vector right here, this displacement vector, is the vector 40 comma 0 because it's being moved horizontally. The suitcase is moving horizontally a distance of 40 feet. And then we can think of applying some force vector to this. You can think of maybe like tugging a rope or something like that of 100 pounds being applied to this. So the magnitude of it, so here's our force vector F. And we don't actually, I didn't actually give you the information. I mean, you could compute it, but you, we don't immediately have the components of this. We don't know exactly what these components are, but we do know that the force vector is 100 pounds the, in, in terms of magnitude, and the direction between these two uh, is uh, pi over 3. So we've got the um, uh, angle between these two vectors, and we know the uh, magnitudes of, of, of each of them, or we're able to compute them. So if we want to find the work done um, in pushing this suitcase 40 feet, exerting a force of 100 pounds uh, applied at this particular angle, well, the work we just said is equal to the uh, force vector dotted with the displacement vector. And so that's equal to, um, well, if we, we can compute this component-wise if we knew it, but in this case, since I don't have the components of the force vector, I'm going to use the alternate definition, the first one that I gave you, which involved the magnitude of the two vectors times the cosine of the angle between them. And so the magnitude of the force vector we already know is 100. And although we haven't computed it, let me, let me uh, be a little more careful here, folks. So let me put magnitude of F uh, times the magnitude of D times the cosine of the angle between them. And the magnitude of this force vector we know to be 100. The magnitude of the displacement vector is 40. And we can see that because the total length of that green vector is 40 times the cosine of the angle between them, which is, in this case, pi over 3 radians. And so we get 400 times, and then the cosine of pi over 3 is the square root of 3 over 2. And so this comes out to be uh, 200 square root of 3. Uh, and then work is measured in foot pounds. Um, in, in the uh, SAE system. And so there we have the work done on this briefcase in this scenario. Folks, real quick, um, I mentioned this once before. Let me just say it again. I will try to always give sort of a bolder um, uh, dot for the dot product as opposed to the traditional smaller center dot that you see in multiplication. However, I believe it should always be clear from context. Because what do you do with two vectors? You can't multiply them together. This can't be the usual multiplication that you, that you learned with numbers. And so the only thing it could be is a dot product. Likewise, these two uh, objects are not vectors. They're the numbers 3 and the numbers 4. So there's no way that could be a dot product. So it should be clear from context. But I will also try to make um, a distinction in the uh, thickness of the dots. Finally, you should be able to work the uh, pre-work for these two sections. Thank you for your patience with this video. Let me know if you have any questions.